You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today we have a new face for Greater Brockton. We have a new rabbi here in town at Temple Beth Amuna, Rabbi Andrea Gauss. I say it right? Absolutely. Okay, welcome. Nice to, nice to meet you. Thank you so officially. much, and, and I appreciate you inviting me here on your show. Well, exciting news for the temple. The temple closed its physical location on Torrey Street after a long time in Brockton. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of went on the road, went over to Beth Am and Randolph, went over to the temple in Canton. Right. Oh, no, Stoughton. Yes. Stoughton, right? Stoughton, no, Canton. And Can I think when, it was when Temple Beth Am um, closed their doors and moved up to Temple Beth Abraham, we also are now having some people go there for services as well until we actually get set up. And you're so. going to get set up in Easton. It's mm -hmm. over on Plymouth Street, I believe. Yes. Okay. And for those of you in the area that you probably know the area. Uh, at one point, uh, Continental or Comcast was over there. Yeah, I was say, it's the old, it's, everybody knows it as the old Comcast building. Okay, so it has a high ceiling and it had a studio in it. Yes, yeah, so back we, in actually, the day. we took the studio down yeah. because we wanted to be able to provide more space within the sanctuary mm -hmm. part of it. But it was kind of neat to. Um, See, when we first walked in, and was looking at the building as a possible site. Yeah, it had been closed for a long time, and it's a good area. It's on the, basically the Brockton Eastern mm -hmm. line, so to speak. So it's not really far from where the temple was to begin with. Which was, a, that was something that was very important to us, that we wanted to still feel like we had the continuity of the roots of where the synagogue came from, that we did not want to move too far away from Brockton. Well, if you know the history of the synagogue, the synagogue originally was on Cottage Street back mm -hmm. in the day. Then the religious school was on West Elm Street. And when Beth Amuna was built on Torrey and Pearl, Torrey and Pearl, Pearl. Um, the, everything came together. That was about 1971. I think I was in junior high or elementary at the time. <laughs> and it was there for years and years. Um, Harbor Health has done a wonderful job oh, restoring the, the temple. Beautiful. It's beautiful inside and out. Um, and this is a new beginning, basically. Yes. So on September 10th, which is a Sunday, the day before the solemn September 11th, um, you're going to have a grand opening, a processional. Tell, tell me about it. Well, we are going to be dedicating the building as a synagogue. So the custom has come to be over the centuries that the way you dedicate a synagogue is that you march the Torahs from a certain starting point and you march them into the building as a way of showing that that building is now going to become a sacred holy place. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are doing as a way of trying to connect to the history of Tumba Beth Moon is that we are actually starting that processional from the Rabbi H. David Werb Interfaith Meditation Garden at Stonehill College which had been dedicated just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start the processional there. Then from there, we're going to get into cars because it's too far to walk. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, about a couple of hundred feet before the building, we are going to get out of cars and we're going to walk down and dance mm -hmm. with the Taurus because it's a celebratory joyous occasion. Right. Um, for those people who might not know what a Torah is, the Torah are the five books of Moses. It's the first five books of the Jewish Bible, and they are written on special scrolls mm -hmm. from which we read each Sabbath. And they are seen as very holy objects. And by bringing them into the synagogue, we are saying that this is our new spiritual home mm -hmm. and that we're going to be able to move forward and, and grow from here. And part of that too, I was reading in the release that we got, and you can explain it a little bit. He gave me the five minute cue, so believe it or not, this goes fast. You're going to affix mezuzahs to the doors, right. which is a parchment scroll that's inside. Right. Of, it has a container, right. and inside the container is there to protect these scrolls that have the words of the Bible on them that each Jewish home and each Jewish synagogue is supposed to attach these words on the doorposts of the house. That comes from the words of Deuteronomy, um, you shall fix them to the doorposts of your house and upon your gates as a way of making it into a Jewish space. No gates, but we have the doors. We have the doors. Okay. So, and, and actually I've told people over the course of time, if it's on a doorpost of a house, don't take it down. 
even if you move. Unless you know for sure that the person that's moving in is not Jewish, right. you are supposed to leave it up there for the next occupant or resident. I tell all the people it's good luck for the people whether they're Jewish Absolutely. or not. That's how I kind of look way, at it's it. It's a way of looking at it is that God's protecting you. Because if you think about the story of Passover and everything, it, mm -hmm. it relates to that as well. So this sounds like an ex exciting time. People have stayed with the temple and followed you over there. Yes. You might even get some back that have may have gone elsewhere. We, are, and we already are having that happen. Happen. There aren't a lot of temples anymore. Brockton at one point had, I think, three or four temples. Right. Luckily, most of them are still houses of worship in another right. sect. In a, a Haitian church. Tradition, right. It's nice to see it's still then, used as a house of worship. Absolutely, because we all have our different paths, but all those paths are legitimate, and they all are trying to strive toward the same goal. So give us info about the temple, the phone number, the website, things that people need to know. Absolutely. I'm going to look at the camera for sure, that. Sure, sure. Um, so we would love to have people come and participate. We'd love to have people come and, and see if they might want to be members of the congregation. And the best way to do that is by going online to templebethamuna.org or to call 508-583-5810. And we would love to have you join us. We are hoping to open our doors for people to come in to use it during the day for socializing and for recreational activities. Um, to be able to see it as a gathering place for the community. So please look us up and join us. And I know you're. I know the temple's been very proactive on social media, and the bulletin is online, and everything is there. Yes. It's easily accessible. You guys keep people informed. You do. You've done things outside of the temple. You know, uh, like lunch and learn and things like that with yes. you. I've, 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 I've been and, keeping and we up. Do have, and we do have a Facebook. Okay. I mean, if you go and look, you know, type in Timba Bethamuna, you will find us on Facebook as well. Now, question for you. This is down the road, but in the past, the temple has always been involved, like for Martin Luther King weekend. Is that going to be something that's continued? There's always a relationship we, we are, between the church that, and the we temple. We are hoping that's going to continue. I know with Reverend Walker having um, stepped down, mm -hmm. um, Steve Weiner, who's always been the person who has overseen and shared that. I know he's in contact already in communication with the new minister. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping moving forward that we would still see ourselves as being part of the greater Brockton area. And we would love to be able to be involved with those things. Well, we're going to be there to cover this, but it's better to be there live. It's better to go in person and see it. Now, are you having high holiday services in yes. the new synagogue? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. And once we have high holiday services, then we're going to be moving forward with the normal activities of a synagogue in terms of services, programs, educational activities, all the things that you'd expect, as well as a lot of the social and recreational pieces that bring a community together. Well, being involved in cable as long as I have for 33 years and knowing that that was the former studio, that's probably the last time I went in that building. <laughs> actually, I went there to pay a bill. My parents live in Easton, so I paid their cable bill after the studio actually closed there. But I'm looking forward to seeing the transformation over and there. And we would love to have you come whenever you'd like to. Okay. Our doors are always going to be open. Okay, well, on that note, I got the rapid cue. Thank you, Rabbi. I appreciate it. And we'll see you over at the dedication. Sounds great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.